Agents. If you had 2 million armor, would you feel like a tank? How about 3 million? Could you go toe to toe with the enemy then? Base tank? Trade punches? The answer is no. That's because the enemy has more armor, like 10 million more. And with all this armor, they're still hidden harder than you. And you're outnumbered. You are an underdog. I like it. The enemy hits so hard in this game, the difference between 1 million and 2 million armor is milliseconds of added survivability. Merely a couple extra bullets from the enemy. In this video, we're going to create a high armor, high damage build. Then, go through several iterations to improve survivability. In the end, you will have multiple build templates you can select from based on your playstyle. Let's do this. A couple housekeeping things to go over first. To keep this video at a reasonable length, I'll be going through the builds quite quickly. So I'll be providing high level views so you can pause the video and take screenshots to view later. Also, I won't be focusing too much on weapon type. Most of these builds, you can roll with whatever your favorite is. For the most part, I'll be using the chameleon to demonstrate. Okay, so this is our starting build. And as you can see right off the bat, it's rolling with over 1.8 million armor. That's a ton. For the mask, we're going with Walker and Harris for that 5% weapon damage. I rolled max armor on it. It's got headshot damage, crit damage, and I put a 12% crit damage mod on it. I'm running a Fenris chest piece, which gives us 10% assault rifle damage. I rolled max armor on it, and it's got crit chance, headshot damage, and I put a 12% crit damage mod on there. And for the talent, I'm running Obliterate, which stacks to give us 25% more weapon damage. The holster is improvised. It's got max armor, max crit damage, crit chance, and a 12% crit damage mod. My knee pads are a group of Sombra for that 15% crit hit damage. It came with crit chance and crit damage, so I just rolled on max armor. My gloves are improvised also. It's got 136,000 armor on there. I rolled max crit damage. It's got 4.9% crit chance and a 12% crit hit damage mod. My backpack is Providence, gives us 15% headshot damage. I rolled max armor on there, and it came with headshot damage, crit hit damage, and I put 11.7% crit hit damage mod on there. And for the talent, I have Vigilance, which gives us 25% more weapon damage. Taking damage disables this buff for 4 seconds. I have the healer drone equipped, which is giving us 21,000 heals per second. For the other talent, just roll with whatever. I have the Banshee Pulse on here, but sometimes I use the turret as well. And for my primary weapon, I'm rolling with the Chameleon, like I mentioned earlier, for most of these builds. I have the Super 90 as my secondary weapon, and I'm running the Card as my sidearm. And a real quick look at the stats. We have 56% crit chance, 179% crit hit damage, and 114% headshot damage. And there's our defense. And you can see we have 10% armor on kill. That's coming from the specialization. Okay, so let's see how this bad boy performs. And let's pay attention to the survivability. And right off the bat, I can tell you I like how hard this thing hits. And this is before the adaptive instincts kicks in. So we got that 75% weapon damage boost and it makes this thing feel like it's on turbo charge. And that's one of the points that I wanted to bring up in this discussion. Time to kill is a big part of your survivability. If you can't bring down that enemy or clear all the enemies in a reasonable amount of time, they'll eventually surround you and bring you down. So I haven't actually taken much damage from the enemy here, but they've managed to wipe my armor down to about 50%. Because I have no healing power, it's just taken a ton of time for it to climb back up. That's really holding me back actually, and it's changing how aggressive I can play. In this game, especially with an AR build, you're gonna take damage. Constantly actually. And the high armor might be keeping me from going all the way down, but without the recovery, I'm not really in the fight at my full potential. Whatever level of survivability this build does have is actually coming from the damage output. For the most part, I'm killing the enemy before they can get a lot of shots off. And that really has nothing to do with the amount of armor I'm wearing. My healer drone is so weak, it's not really doing anything for me. I might as well not have it. What's keeping me alive is the armor on kill, and that is related to my damage output. So I have two of the adaptive instincts active right now. So that means I have about 225% crit hit damage and 100% weapon damage boost. Also because of obliterate. But that's sort of ridiculous. I felt like I only got pegged by a couple of bullets and look at my armor, right? 1.8 million armor and look at it. Okay, I'm gonna skip forward to the boss skirmish because this is gonna prove my point about this build. So this is gonna show us that the balance of a build is really important. So my healer drone is down, so we're not getting any benefit from that, not like we were getting much before anyways. And it's two against one, and both these enemies are quite tanky. And they're smart, they're both working to try to flank me. I estimate combined, they have probably close to 30 million armor, so I gotta put 30 million damage output. 
and that armor on kill I was getting earlier is not gonna benefit me here, right? So I'm trying to move to make sure they don't get me in a pinch. And there you have it, I'm down. So I could have used an armor kit. That would have bought me maybe a few more seconds. But bottom line is, their damage output was greater than mine. And I didn't have the heals to keep up. So for this build, I felt like the damage output was great. It was there. That wasn't the problem. It's more about we need to be able to recover faster from the hits. So I think that's the adjustment that we need. Let's get rolling on the next iteration of this build. Okay, so this is going to be a small, easy adjustment that makes a big difference. So all I'm doing here is adding the Memento Backpack. So we lose Vigilance, a little bit of crit damage as well, but what we gain is 15% weapon damage from that red core. We also gain a skill tier, which is going to give us more power to our healer drone. On top of that, we get the Memento Trophies, which give us all those short-term buffs. That's going to turn this into more of a run and gun build. So keep in mind here, we don't have the full stacks on the Backpack Trophies yet. But every time we pick up one, notice how much bonus armor I get. That's survivability. That bonus armor allows us not only to take more damage, but buy more time for our healer drone to heal our base armor so that we can keep going. It also gives us a big weapon damage boost every time we pick those things up. With all of that comes a lot of player confidence to push, push, push. This keeps the enemy on their heels, which makes it harder for them to get you in a pinch and that survivability. Once we stack 30 trophies, we have 30% skill repair coming in. We're also getting 3% armor regen, so our recovery rate becomes high, which in turn increases our aggressiveness and allows us to clear these control points much faster. So remember, we're still running 1.8 million armor, so that skill repair, that time to get us to full armor, is still relative, so keep that in mind. It does appear to be slow. It's just that we have a ton of armor. So this is a great start. I'm pretty happy with the direction that this build is going now, but I know we can do better. Let's take this to the next level. Okay, agents, this is where the magic's gonna happen. We made some transformational changes here. So I'm gonna go over this as quickly as possible, but keep in mind, you can screenshot this for later review. So right off the bat, I want you to notice that I dropped my armor down from 1.8 million to 1.1 million. Huge difference the survivability is going to go up in this build, believe it or not. So the theme of this build is built on three pillars. One is crit damage, the other one is repair skills, and third is incoming repairs. Now you don't need as much crit chance as you saw on the earlier build, and that's because of adaptive instincts, which throws you over 60% crit chance when it kicks in. The chest piece is a key element of this build. It gives us 110% repair skills. I've also changed the specialization to the survivalist, which means I can run the Mender Seeker mine and double my healing power. Keep in mind by doing this, I lose 10% armor on kill, but I gain 10% protection from elites. Little trade-off. So each skill is giving me about 75,000 heals per second at its base. So that's a total of 150,000 heals per second before kinetic momentum and a memento backpack, which together gives you a 60% boost when all the stacks are active. That comes out to around 240,000 heals per second. That's 25% of our armor back per second, give or take. That sounds a lot like survivability to me, right? But I'm not done. We have 40% incoming repairs. That means when our skills are at full power, we're getting an additional 96,000 heals per second. That totals to 336,000 heals per second. That's one third of our armor back every second. And when we have all of our trophies, we're gaining 3% armor regen, which is giving us 33,000 armor back per second. So all in all, we're getting 369,000 armor back per second. That's not counting the short-term buffs from the trophies, nor is it counting the 10% protection from elites, which is a factor. Okay, here's the perfect example. Watch this part. I'm getting tag team hit from three sides. Nobody should survive this. But with this build, my comeback is quick and I come out on top. Agents, if you like these builds, then you'll definitely want to check out Shield, the build I created for episode 4 of my Netflix-style build miniseries for The Division 2. Check it out, you'll be running through enemies. Okay, I love where this build is going, but believe it or not, we can step it up another level. Okay, so watch closely because I'm going to make these changes on the fly. What I'm doing is replacing three repair skills mods 
for three protection from elite mods. So I still want that healing power. So to compensate for the loss of repair skills, I'm gonna run the Marine Super 90 that has damage to target out of cover and the talent reformation, which gives me 30% skill repair for 15 seconds when I land a headshot, which is really easy to do because of the scatter. Lastly, I'm swapping out my Fenris knee pads for my Badger Tough, which gives me 10% shotgun damage. I rolled repair skills on it. It's got max armor and armor regen. So we're at 1.3 million armor now, a little bit of a buff. This is with 49% protection from elites, and with it comes a lot of player confidence and less need to be in cover, making this setup the ultimate heroic run and gun build. And to recap, it's built on a layered system of protection, what I'm calling Invisis Shield. There's no need for a hard shield in this game, guys. That's just a crutch until you get shot in the back. Plus, it slows you down. It keeps you from running. Run and gun builds rely on speed and agility. Anyways, sorry about my tangent there. In sum, I have the survivability, I have the damage, I can even take my time face tanking this boss. Who seems to be tuck tailing and running, so I'll have to chase him down. I'll spare you. Agents, I'm glad you watched this video to the end. This really helps my channel, and in turn helps me create more cool videos like these for you. If you're new to my channel, then you have some binge watching to do. I do a Netflix style build miniseries for The Division 2. Each episode has a unique cinematic intro from the character's perspective as they hunt and unlock pieces of the story. They also include the character's unique build specs, gameplay, and an amazing soundtrack. Catch up on previous episodes using these links and links in the description area below. Tuxedo out.